Okay, at the end of the previous video, we had this animation. So this rotating animation. What I want to do now is to add some flair to it. Excuse the pun. To begin, I actually want to change the overall starting position for all of these. As you can see, this one is up by 30 and this one is horizontal. I want them to be aligned in a, in a straight line. So the easiest way to do that, as opposed to taking all of these and offsetting them by 15 degrees, is I'm just going to select all of them, hit Control G for a group, and then group them together, and then offset the group by minus 15 degrees. And now you can see all of them rotate slightly, and the same will be applied for the animation. None of the keyframes changed. Their local position compared to their, um, their parent has changed, however, and we've only changed the group's transform space. So nothing has been affected with our animation. So next up, what I want to do is we are going to use a feature called Trim Paths to animate a moving path. So let's begin by hitting O for ellipse and then shift drag the ellipse onto the stage. Then hit T for translate. And we want it to be completely in the center. And then I'm going to remove the fill and the thickness for the stroke, the outline, I'm going to set that to 20 and not white. I'm going to be, I give it a darker gray. And then now if we scroll down, you can see that we have this property called trim paths, which is currently off. So if you go to animate, the trim path feature is not there. You need to actually turn it on. So we're going to say sequential, or we can say synced. Sequential is if you have multiple paths in the same shape, the offset will be applied or the animation on the path will apply, be applied to all of them at the same time. I will come back to this at the end. It will make more sense once we start doing it actually. So for now, it doesn't matter which one we, we choose. So let's just say sequential. And as you can see, we have a start, an end and an offset. So let's say we play around with the start and move it. You can see that in the um, the ellipsis border or the ellipsis path moves as we drag this value up. This is also not something I've mentioned before. All of the properties in the flare inspector can be changed by clicking and dragging up and down. So it's an easy way to play around with these values. So what we want to do is we want this to animate as the balls rotate across the screen. So we're going to do that by beginning our animation at a start of 100%, an end of 50, and then an offset of 25. And now you can see we have this um, half moon essentially at the very top. So I've already played around with them and I knew that the values would be 150 and 25. So I, did, I didn't want to waste your time playing around, but we could have gotten the same effect. How I got it initially was just playing around with the values until I felt happy. So um, I also knew that I wanted a half circle at the start. So that would obviously be um, a hundred and a 50, half of which is the entire radius. And then an offset of 25, just to get it to rotate um, to the desired starting position. So if we go to animate now, we can see that we have this. And what I want to do is I want to keyframe all of these attributes at the start. So I'm going to hit keyframe for the start, the end and the offset. Then I'm going to move the animation header along. And basically once it gets to the bottom here, I want this one to offset and follow it along. So we're just going to move this. And as you can see, if I scroll up, that's the wrong direction. I want it to move in an anti-clockwise pattern, same as the balls. And let's just do minus 25. Now I also want these to be brought in. I want the start and the end position to be narrower or closer to the center point. So we're gonna drag the start position to let's say 80%. And the end, we're gonna drag that that in as well. 
80 might be a bit too much. Let's say 85. Okay, fantastic. Now what we can do is I can go to the ellipse, which is the um, border outline. I can take the first keyframe, control C, and then go to the end of our animation and hit control V. And now you will see we have this, it goes anti-clockwise and then goes back. We do not want that. So a quick fix, we can just look at the offset. We have 25% and then it goes minus 25. So the next logical value will be a plusing or adding another minus 50, which would go to minus 75. So we're gonna say minus 75. Now you won't see any difference because it's the exact same position, but let's start. And I see it's, it's running smooth. However, at some points in time, I guess I did screw up. This should not be 65 at the start. It should be 50. And at the end, it should be 50 as well. Okay, and let's hit play. And there we have a trim path animation. So I promised that I would go back and explain. If we um, highlight the ellipse again and go to the trim path, as you can see, we have sequential and synced. Let's imagine for this ellipse, we say convert path, and then we hit the pen tool and we add another path to it. Um, let's just hit control shape. Let's drag this path into this ellipse. Now I can see that this ellipse have this has this path and the separate path as well. Let's go to animate and hit play. You can see that they animate at the exact same time. When this one starts, the other one starts. If we go to design, hit the ellipse and change to synced. I actually lied, it was sequential previously. So the one would start only once the other one has finished. Um, with synced, it will be at the exact same moment in time. So let's see what happens with synced. They're supposedly moving at the exact same time. And for sequential, it would do one and then it would do the other one. Okay. Pretty bad example on my, my end, um, but I hope you do get the idea. Um, it's essentially just the order in which the path will be animated. But because we are only animating one path, it doesn't actually matter. We can just use sequential or synced and we do not need this path. We're only going to, going to be animating the ellipse. And that's that for now. In the next video, we will continue to make this animation shine a bit more.